You straight up cuckooed that dude, bro. Oh my God. You've got all your Charger gear on because- That look good. I got big energy every day. Let's go! And he is dicked. Blind squirrel finds a knife every once in a while. That's right. You have to love what you're seeing on tape if you're a Chargers fan, especially for the future with Justin Herbert. On the move and throws and touchdown. Oh, come on, Herbert. Players, coaches, staff, fans, together, we can create something truly special. Stay tuned for some good content. <laughs> Well, hello there, everybody. Welcome back to the Charger Chat. I'm your co-host, Wooldog, sitting with my buddies, Gev Hug and Duggan. Hi. And Kyle, the coach, Duggan. Hi. 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 Hello. Hi, everybody. All right. Well, we've got lots to talk about this episode. We've got the Pro Bowl that happened. We've got some moving and shaking going on in the coaching staff. A very special Bolt Insight may or may not have a Charger player in there. and It's a Charger player. <laughs> and fan <laughs> focus. And as always, ask Bolt fam. But uh, let's start it off uh, with the current bit of news as far as what occurred this Sunday, if you could even call it a game. Uh, <laughs> what was that? game occurred. So NFC, stupid. AFC. It was ridiculous. Now, I, I was talking to Kyle about it prior to us recording. I was like, I haven't watched the Pro Bowl in a while. Like, not because I'm like boycotting it or anything like that, but just we haven't had a dog in the fight. We haven't had a player that's been like, oh my God, I have to watch it to see them play. Yeah. But this was like, okay, Herbert's playing. I got to watch this. And I mean, what? <laughs> no, there's no Sean Taylor's out on that field. That's, no, that's for sure. No, no that, that call was way off. There no, was no, nobody yeah. trying to do nothing. Didn't even I was try. Not happening. So, two hand touch. Just yeah, two hand football. touch, like dosy doing everywhere, and it was yeah. like and interceptions out the wazoo. Like every and then you got the tryhards like Max Crosby. I'm gonna get MVP because I'm gonna go really fast when everyone else is going really slow. Right? Yeah, like exactly. get out of here, dude. You yeah. bozo. Yeah, it was just I forget every year. Like I'm like you said, don't really watch it all that much, but watched it this year. I was like, oh yeah, let's watch the football. Oh shit, I think I have the stuff to do. Like I yeah, just yeah. watched Justin and I was like, I'm out. Like I yeah, can't watch yeah. anymore. This, this is hard to watch. Well, I mean, to be fair, that was the best stuff to watch was Justin Herbert. That first yeah. touchdown, like that was a, the, the, the walls yeah. were closing in. And That's what he boom. did all season. It was like, he d- didn't stop. Tiny He's not going to stop. Space. Yeah. 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 Like that was at least impressive. And then the Would other guys- one, would, yeah, threw. what did you guys think about the idea of him throwing to a tight end? Right? Like, he's throwing to Mark Andrews, a Pro Bowl type tight end. Yeah. Is that a part of our offense that he's making those guys look good? But if you could give him a an actual, like, Stunt. elite pass catching tight end, what it could look like? Well, I mean, he certainly utilized the tight ends this past season, whether it was to par him when he was healthy or to Cook. I mean, it, he wasn't afraid to throw to those guys, so that's certainly a position that he could throw it to. And yeah, if we beefed up that position to a you know to somebody that is on that level of a Pro Bowl tight end, forget about it. Like, I just that's, forget about it. Seems it. like a position where you know it's that that kind of more intermediate route stuff. But somebody that's quick enough, he can get the ball in the tightest of areas. So if you can box people out, he's yeah. a good tight end is going to be. It's going to make a lot of, going to set a lot of records and do a lot of shit with Justin. Absolutely. Yeah. So I think if anything, you know, the one that there's a, there's a lot of talk now. I, it's so funny because after that happened, everyone's talking about like, oh, what tight end should we get? This is exciting. Yeah. And that yeah. that's shot to the shot to the top of the list of things we need to get. This <laughs> yeah. Number one position of need. Yeah. Tight first end. overall tight draft end. pick. <laughs> Look how good he is with a real tight end. Like, yes. Yeah. I, you know, it, Cook is a real tight end. He's just, he's he not. Quite, he doesn't have the hands. He said a lot of drop balls, <laughs> yeah. right? He, he contributed exactly. to the drop balls, which I mean, a lot of our receivers did, but uh, Cook seemed to do it. Seemed to do it more than others. I don't know who actually had the most drops on the team, so don't quote me on that. Wasn't but, me. Don't yeah, quote it definitely me, boy, wasn't me either. So, um, so yeah. So the game happened. Uh, every time Herbert played was at least <laughs> the entertaining. Game happened. It happened. <laughs> <laughs> it it wasn't cool, but it, it was right. there. They did um, it. AFC ended up winning 41 to 35 and uh, the two MVPs. The first was Max Crosby for the defensive MP, MVP and the offensive MVP was as it should have been Justin Herbert. Yeah, yes. To, or daddy. Yes. To a, or daddy. a resounding boo from a lot of people in the stadium, which was. Dude. Just rent, silly. rent free. Yeah. Rent free. He just sat there says. and smiled. Just... Right. He just had his very 
It's very and you can see you can see smirk. Max Crosby yeah. kind of just like tap him like sorry dude. He's like dude, I don't give a shit. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's really <laughs> I hate about. you guys. I hate. <laughs> take a step away from me. Social distance yeah, yeah, yourself yeah, yeah. <laughs> away from me. Right, Max Crosby. Yeah. So uh, yeah, Herbert ended up getting uh, MVP and uh, ended the day seven for 11, 98 yards, two touchdowns, and almost was interceptionless, but he did throw one there near the end. Uh, yeah. But you know, I mean, just played them, played great. My dad had a funny comment. He's like, what if uh, Justin just like refused to throw to anyone from the AFC West? Like no matter how <laughs> wide open, no matter, he's just like, I can't do it. I can't throw it to him. Or, Baltimore. or on a little dump off route, just throw it as hard as you can right in his head. <laughs> like Hunter Renfro on a little out, like a little arrow route to the flat. Yeah. Just throw it as hard as you can right in his head. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been pretty funny that if he just been doinked funny. all the Raiders as hard as he could on short little routes. Well, yeah. it would have been, Kelsey doinked all of them, and it just it would have been very uncharacteristic of Herbert, who's just been nothing but the he kind would of never sweetest. Do it. He's yeah, too, too, too good of a dude. Yeah, that would have been funny. It would have been funny. Um, and sadly, uh, we, we didn't get a chance to mention it on the Friday episode, but we were we all. We're eagerly waiting to see something in the skills competition and uh, got nothing, got nothing, big, nothing. I mean, the most we got was Derwin James trying to pick off Kirk Cousins and those, those skill, the, the games they played sounded a lot cooler on paper. It really did. Yeah. Like the fastest <laughs> man. What a joke that was. Dude. Yeah. Like get out of here. Tyree kill. If you're not going to run, don't sign up for the thing. Exactly. Yeah. Just yeah, don't, don't be a part of the competition. If right. You're gonna, you don't want to do it. Not get in a it. stance jog the whole way like what's the point of even being out there right yeah i'm sure we somebody had a gun up to him or something you jogging <laughs> yeah so that that was a big whatever um <laughs> it, the, it, it, it sucks well it was like this was yeah. supposed to be kind of like the last little hoorah football you know before yeah. we go off into the off season and it was just like well there was some good social media stuff though the chargers put up some cool stuff of them yes. at practice and yeah I mean, honestly, interacting with the guys. The and, practices seemed way more fun than the game actually yeah. was. Like, if, yeah. if I were to go next year, I would only want to go to the practice. Like, yeah. forget and the game. I don't need to go. <laughs> and it's, we have our fan focus this week. Um, this episode was there and oh, gave cool. some pretty cool insight. And apparently it was free. It didn't cost anything Get to go to practices. So, oh, oh, well, 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 we'll learn some more later. But we yeah. might have to do that next year if, uh, if, if if we have a reason to go, because go to, maybe, maybe... It sounds like a reason. Well, if the Chargers are in the Super Bowl, then I don't think there's a reason to go, oh, my yeah. friend. Actually, if that's the case, then <laughs> I'll pay for somebody else to go to Vegas for me to watch the Pro Bowl. <laughs> there you go. Um, well, during the Pro Bowl, it, it appeared that uh, Derwin James was getting pretty buddy-buddy with another uh, safety, and that's uh, Tyron Matthew, who was going to be a free agent from the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, yeah, the Tyron tweeted out, jump man, jump man, jump man, them boys up to something at Derwin James. And that was, uh, that was pretty, this, this is, <laughs> this it, is it's the that weird. time of year. It's, it's that, that time, time of year where you're looking it, it into everything. You find everything yeah. and look into everything. It is what it is. And these guys know what they're doing though. Oh, you yeah. know, like Tyron's not dumb to the fact that if he puts this out, all of us are going to think that they're trying to hook up in in LA. Like there's no there's no way around it. He knows what he's doing. Yeah. He sucked me into it. I commented on it. And it's like if you looked at that post, the amount of Charger fans that posted on that were like, come to us. Oh yeah. Come sit down. Join us. <laughs> oh, like, yes. It was a lot. It was a lot. Uh, and... They they've already done the jersey swaps with him and everything like that. So uh, it's I mean, it's just like it was with Jalen Ramsey. When Jalen Ramsey was getting buddy buddy with Derwin, it was just like, ooh, maybe, maybe Derwin will get Jalen Ramsey over here or yeah. something like that. He'd, and, be, he'd be an expensive ad for oh, yes. not necessarily the most important place of need. So I would temper your expectations no, a yeah. little bit. I, I I bet it it's not out of the realm of possibility with the amount of money that the Chargers are gonna have. And and defense being a an opportunity to beef up. Um, he also, uh, if anybody that saw the social media post of uh, Herbert throwing to Tyron Matthews' uh, son, little Matthew, uh, <laughs> and I, it was funny because he was throwing it to a bunch of kids, and all the kids were like dropping it as much as we were last season. But the one guy who did catch it was Tyron Matthews' son, and. Uh, and and pulled it in, so good good for him. And just one yeah. more reason to come. Like you can, you get Justin Herbert to throw to you all the time, buddy. He'll play with your kids. It'll be fun all the yeah, time. Yeah. He's a sweet guy. He's a yes. nice guy. He's not gonna say no. Yeah. Yes. And Tyron retweeted our the Chargers post with like 
fire. Is that what that is? Flames? Yes. Like, yeah. Fuego. He knows what he's doing. Yes. You don't do he's that. Fan like, in the flames. That's clearly, what he's, doing. he's clearly exactly not it. going back to the Chiefs because you're not going to do this kind of stuff and piss off your whole fan base if oh, you're planning yeah. to come back to the Chiefs. Mm-hmm. Oh, he's retweeting the Chargers Twitter. Yes. Yeah, they lost that yeah, our official Twitter account. He's retweeting. You're yeah. not going back. He's no longer a Chief. No. Yeah. No. He's. I mean that that tweet that he put out basically made it seem like. See ya. Thank you know. Thanks for all the fish. Well, the Chiefs you know? can't afford him with what they're going to have to pay Mahomes. No, they can't afford not. anybody. Yeah. Yeah. He's, so he's playing the field. He's uh, he's he's slutting it up a little bit right yeah, now. Let him have a good schmoozing. time. He's schmoozing. He's a free man. Let him have a good time. <laughs> right. So, um, all right. Well, looking over at the Chargers coaching staff, uh, we all saw earlier in this postseason that uh, we let go of Darius Swinton from the special teams coordinator position, and didn't take long for us to fill the position with Coach Ryan Ficken as the special teams coordinator. Cool name. It's a great name. Um, I think it's like German and chicken. Thick and German is something <laughs> nice. I like Ryan. Thick and chicken um, on special teams. Um, add it up to here. Thick and looking good. <laughs> um, all right. Well, Mr. Uh, Ryan Ficken, uh, 15 season NFL coach veteran. Uh, Ficken spent his entire NFL career with the Minnesota Vikings, served as the Vikings special teams coordinator in 2021 after assisting with the unit for the previous eight seasons. And per Vikings.com, Eric Smith, team reporter, Ficken was promoted to special teams coordinator in 2021 because of the Vikings special teams unit's inconsistent play. Vikings head coach Mike Zimmer did not uh, renew the contract of the former special teams coordinator, Marwin Malouf, uh, after the 2020 season ended. And his special teams unit led the NFC in kickoff return average and coached kicker uh, Greg Joseph to lead the conference with 33 made field goals, uh, while ride receiver uh, Kenne Nwangwu uh, led the NFL with two kickoff return touchdowns. Uh, so made it better. That's awesome. Yeah. I, yeah. Do you know what's crazy? It's the Darius Swinton. We talked about it, how he was a one year everywhere he went. Mm-hmm. There's one year on this team, one year on this team. Right, this guy yes. was with the Vikings. One team for 15 years. <laughs> right. That's a long that's, time. That's a long time. And um, yeah, I, I heard that we had gone after him and already requested an interview and the Vikings denied it. They shut it down. They said no. Was so that because, last year? Uh, no, this year. This year. It was this offseason. We had asked and they said no because they're getting a new coach. They wanted to keep him mm. on even with the new coach. Right. Um, and so they said, no, you can't You can't interview him. because can't if, if have him. If he's going to a lateral position, so the same position, the, mm-hmm. the team that has him under contract can say no. If he's promoting to another, a higher position, then the team can't say anything. Gotcha. Um, so since he, we were re- interviewing for, for the same exact title that he has, they said no. And then we just kept going back again and again. And finally, they were like, okay, fine. Like, <laughs> leave us alone. <laughs> Take thick and chicken already. <laughs> <laughs> it's 1 a.m. Stop. Just <laughs> yeah. do it well, already. God. It's, it's kind of interesting to see that he got, you know, one year promoted to this and, you yeah. know, what he did. And immediately it was also, made him better. Yeah. Immediately made him better. And it, it's it'll be interesting to see. I'm not like, like he's going to change everything. Because like when we talked to Matt Overton, it was like the difference of special teams is like, you know, a couple feet. It's like one kickoff return took them from like the last to like middle of the pack. So, mm-hmm. um consistency is all I'm looking for. If they, if they don't have giant splash plays next year, I'm okay. As long as we're consistent from the beginning of the year, I don't want to lose any close games because of consistency issues. So mm-hmm. hopefully he comes in and sets a tone and clearly, you know, coach wanted him. The staff wanted him. So yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad they got their guy. Yeah. I don't see any connections. I don't know if he went to John Carroll or if he, <laughs> Probably, or if he went to Notre his, Dame or what the connection might his be. His unofficial but. Wikipedia. He did go there. We'll just okay. say that. We'll um, just say it. We'll just say it because that's a nice story that we can, uh, we can use. There you go. Yeah. Uh, and if you want to go to a nice website, you can go to chargerchat.com <laughs> and check out some of the nice things. I want all the segues that we <laughs> collected in one there. place. <laughs> uh, you can check out some of the gear we've got. We've got shirts, uh, hoodies, and stickers, and all kinds of good stuff. And then you can also chat it up with other Charger Chatteers and post and uh, for Ask Bolt Fam. And, and, we, and we pop on there as well, and we'd like to interact with you guys. So go on over, check it out, chargerchat.com. All right, gang. Well, now it is time for a Bolt Insight. 
It's a very special one. I've already watched this. This is just such a sweet and juicy interview. Spe- special teams themed, if yes, you will. Yes, yes. We're 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 making our rounds on the special team side of things for for sure. And this Gotta is no exception. Uh, let's welcome <laughs> to the Charger Chat podcast, Mr. Ty Long. Let's go. Or is it Ty Long? It is. It Ty may Long. or may not be. It's definitely Ty Long. <laughs> Roll the clip. As soon as the clock starts, your ass mine. When I met Justin Herbert, man, that dude is big as hell. You know, the goal is to just keep it rolling. Well, come in hype because we have a lot of things to be excited about. All right, guys, we are back with another Bolt Insight, and we are super pumped to have Ty Long. What is going on, Ty? What's up, brother? Glad to be here. Dude, super pumped to have you. Um, okay, cool. A quick question. Want to get it right out of the way. You are a team captain. I got to know, do you guys have like a special private bathroom? Do you have like a lounge that you guys get access to as being a captain? How does that work? You know, uh, we don't. It, uh, the, the, only, the only benefit, you want to you know what it is? What? You get a C on your chest. That's about it. So, uh, but no, it's, it's cool, man. It's such a, it's, um, you know, I've been on team three years. They started making me a captain like midway through my first year. So being a captain two and a half years is, is something cool because it's, it's like your, your teammates are picking you, you know, it's, it's something, um, it's just, it's just an honor, you know, but it takes, you know, you, you gotta be a leader at all times, you know, even when it's tough, you know, that's, that's the part of being a leader when, when times are tough, you got to keep pushing and, uh, you know, but it's, it's, there's so many good guys on our team. like. I played on a lot of teams. There's a bunch of good dudes on Chargers, so it's it's a cool team to be a part of. Yeah, that's awesome. We we love watching you guys play, and it just seems like the energy is just way more positive than some of the other teams and some of the other stories you hear come out. It's like Chargers wouldn't do that. Charger players wouldn't do that. No, no. There's there's not many. I'll say this. Like I said, I've been around. I've been with the Washington, been with Pittsburgh, you know, and uh, both of those are good teams, and been around and just heard stories around the league. And, uh, you know, Tom Telesco and, and ownership, they don't, they don't bring bad people into the building. They don't, you know, and that, that's the one thing that's impressed me over the three years I've been there. It's just like each draft class, each, each guy they sign, it's just like, man, like it's impressive. Yeah, it's awesome. We're, we're very lucky that that's the case. And I, want, I wanted to kick it off with, uh, you know, you, you know, coming into the league, you started with Washington, you know, like what was it like going from college being in the NFL it's a lot, you know, um, your rookie year is it's, it's, it's so much, you know, because the, the, the reality of now it's a business, you know, you're not a college student anymore. Um, getting used to the schedule. It's, it's a lot, you know, getting used to the pressures of the job and, um, you know, it, it, it takes, it takes a good bit, you know, especially for specialists when there's one on each team, usually, um, you know, it's hard to make it in your first year or so, you know? And, um, for me though, going to Washington, I got to be around guys like Tress way and, and Kai Forbath and guys like that. And I got to learn from them and it was cool. You know, it's good experience. And, um, you know, it was, it was, it was a fun time. Well, and it was interesting. I was doing research for this interview and I, I was looking at it and it looked like you and, and Dustin missed each other by like a month and a half in Washington. Literally. So that's crazy. And then now you guys are on the same team. Like, what is it like, you know, working with Dustin? He seems like a really cool guy. He is, uh, he is one of the funniest humans I've, I've been around, you know? And so, um, I mean the whole group, I mean, uh, Matt, Tristan, Dustin, you know, we all, we all are just great friends and, uh, you know, Dustin is, is so good at first off his job. Um, but he's, he's such a good teammate in the sense of, you know, being a specialist, the, when you get one opportunity every 24 minutes, 25 minutes, whatever it is, uh, there there's, you get one shot, you know, and there's sometimes it doesn't go your way, you know, and there's, there's times where you come off the field and you're just like, yeah, dang it. You know, like I wish I could have done better. And Dustin's so good at, you know, uh, at talking to you. And, And that's the good thing about all of us is we all work together in the sense of keeping each other up through the good times and through the hard times, you know? Yeah. And, and I'm curious, you know, it seems like that, that knit, you guys have such a tight knit group and like what we don't see too much of like what goes on besides like game day. Like what is like a normal week for the specialists? Like, um, are you, what kind what's the practices? Like, what are you guys doing during the week? Yeah. So, um, early on in the week, usually, um, last year, uh, or last season, Wednesday and Thursday were my kicking days. I would punt on those days. And then, um, Dustin would hit on, uh, Thursday, Friday, 
you know, so on Wednesday, we're getting back into the r- rhythm, me and Matt working the laces with each other to make sure we're all good there, getting ready for Dustin. And then, and then from, um, once we get our work in throughout those days, then it's working for Dustin to get everything situated with him and get all his timing down because, you know, each week you're trying to work on, you know, what you did well the week, the game before, and maybe what you could have done better, you know? And, um, he's so it's, it's good because me and him are very similar in the sense of, and same for Matt and, and same for Tristan is we're, we all want to be perfect every time, you know? So you're always searching for that. How can we do this a little bit better and this and that? And we all just work really well together because we all expect the same out of each other. That's awesome. And, you know, it was really cool to see, you know, it was, it was unfortunate that Badgley went down, but it was also really cool to see that year you step in and do both. You know, you were kicking off, punting, you were doing everything, the Swiss army knife, if you will. Why, why aren't there more like dual threat kind of one kicker does everything kickers in the league? It's hard. It's, it's hard, you know, especially when the job is be as close to perfect at all times, you know, um, it's, it's a lot on the body. I mean, I'm, I'm, I broke my foot that year, you know, cause That's I had right. done it. I had done it in Canada, but when I came to the CFL, I mean, when I came to the NFL, I wasn't training that way to do everything again. So when I got that load of everything on there, that's, that's how I ended up breaking my foot. And, um, you know, but it's, you know, it's, for me, it's cool because I know not many guys have done it or can do it. Yeah. And, um, it's a respect thing I got around the league, you know, for doing it. And, totally. um, but there, there's a select few who could, who might be able to do it, but to do it for a whole season, um, 17 games, um, at that level is, is doable. I mean, I've done it in Canada, but I like my job now too. You know yeah. what I mean? So, sure. and having a guy like Dustin and, uh, who's, who's really good at his job too. There's, there's no reason for it. Well, and it doesn't hurt having a punter that can also do all those jobs. Of, yeah. And, you know, when the situation arises, you got to do it. So we're Absolutely. grateful, grateful you're there for us. Um, you know, and I wanted to ask you, cause you've been on the team, you know, you've been on the team for a little bit during this kind of weird transition as like chargers where we went from, you know, StubHub to SoFi. And, and kind of the fan base has kind of changed over the last three years a little bit in terms of turnout and stuff. What, what have you seen going from playing at like a 30,000, you know, spectator stadium to now so far, it's like 70 and like the turnout, like, what have you seen? You know, coming from StubHub, um, you know, we played some games there where we played the Packers, you know, when we played, um, those type of teams where they travel really well. Yeah. And, um, it's hard playing on the road, you know, I mean, cause when you're trying to catch the momentum throughout the game and this and that, and, and, you know, as a player, you, you feel the fans, you know what I mean? You feel like even, even there's times like, you know, we travel well, like the chargers, believe it or not, they travel well, yeah. you know, like we went to Cincinnati, like we took over Cincinnati, you yeah, know, and, that was, uh, that was, that was so was, awesome to see. I love seeing that that was cool, you know? And, um, and just to see like this organization, um, how it's changed just in the three years, you know, it's, um, it's, it's cool because throughout the fan base, throughout the players, throughout ownership, everything, it's like, you got everyone sort of working together to try to, uh, to, for the main goal, you know what I mean? Which we all know what it is, you know? And, um, it's, it's cool because as the players, you feel the fans and you hear them, and when you, when we make those big plays and the place goes nuts, that's, it's, it's unbelievable. You know, it's a great feeling. Yeah. It's, and for us that, you know, as diehard fans and we've been fans for 20 plus years, it's like, it gets so annoying. Everyone telling us you the chargers don't have fans. I'm like, we have fans. They're just yeah. like, we're finally getting our season tickets and getting into our new stadium. And it's like, I just wish we got a little more respect for that. And I love that you're saying that you're saying like, as the season goes, like, cause we, you know, we get the mic'd up and we hear the players like, like it's getting a little loud in here. Like it's getting, you know, some of the defensive players. So that's, I'm glad that we're able to do that and help the players out. You know, that's, that's the part about being a professional athlete too, man, is like blocking out all the noise. Sure. And I guess that for the fans too, like the people who are saying it, do they actually go to games? No, Probably not. Right. No. So it's like their opinions don't matter. Yeah, it's mostly Raider fans who have no good arguments whatsoever. 
That's all they got. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's why it was nice to beat him in SoFi. And we should have beat him in Vegas. But yeah, um, yeah, the Vegas game was nuts. So. Oh, wild. Yeah, I'll ask you about that in a little bit because that was just insane. Um, and then I wanted to ask you a little bit, same thing, kind of comparison. You were at the very last year of Phil. You had Phil on your team. And now, you know, we had that odd, interesting year where it was like Tyrod that became Justin and now Justin. So what was it like having Phil and Justin? They're totally, they're very different quarterbacks, but man, the energy is so much fun to watch. Yeah. So they both are elite. Um, that's the one comparison. Um, playing with Phil was so cool just because you're getting to learn and listen to a guy who has seen it all, you know, and, and, um, you know, I, I, I grew up, you know, being in Atlanta, but I was always a, I'm not going to say like a, I was a Falcons fan growing up, but I grew up a Chargers fan because of the powder blue jerseys. I just yeah. always like the powder blue jerseys, right. And play with Madden with him, play with Phil and, um, getting to meet him. I mean, he, he's unbelievable, like human player, everything. Awesome. And then you get uh, Justin Herbert who comes in here and is just this quiet leader who just does his work, is going to do his job. And, um, you know, I, 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 the one thing I love about him is uh, like, I'm, I'm a big competitor, like in anything, like we're at the golf course, I'm gonna try to beat you this and that. And I hate losing. The one person I've met that hates losing more than me is Justin Herbert like on the ping pong table, when we've played golf, you know, like seeing him, how competitive he is, the, the kid's a freaking winner, you know? And that's, that's, what's cool about him is he, uh, he does all the right things. And, um, you know, the, the chargers are in the fan base. You got your quarterback. You know what I mean? He's on and off the field. He's awesome. He's a, he's a great person, great kid. And, uh, just a great dude. That's awesome. And I wanted to ask you about the ping pong. Cause we saw something that was very vague. We saw like a bracket in the beginning of the year. There was like a whole bracket. And that, you were up there a little higher, weren't you? Yeah, I was the two seed. And yeah. uh, I ended up losing to Steven Anderson in the championship game. Oh. I'm like, crazy shot. But it was so much fun, man. Like early on in the year, everyone's bodies are feeling good. You know, we had a little extra juice and this and that. So when we had downtime, we were playing this ping pong tournament. And uh, it was so much fun. Like the championship game, there was like every, the whole team was surrounded. Oh, no. In this game. It, was, it, was, it was actually really cool. So, uh, but, we, you know, we, we played a lot of it during our downtime. And um, yeah, it, it was cool team, com uh, team camaraderie and all that. And uh, yeah, it was a lot of good players on the team. We're pulling for you next year. You're going to get that, get that W. <laughs> Yeah. Um, um, and then I wanted to ask you too. Um, we, we had Braden Fahoko on and Matt on, and we were talking a little bit about like what it's like going to other, you know, stadiums and the craziest stuff these guys <laughs> have heard from opposing fans. And Braden said, you're, you're, you're solid. You, you got the, the talk back. Good. You know how to get them. So what is yeah. it like, you know, what is some of the craziest stuff you've ever heard coming from opposing fans? I can't say the real stuff, you know what I mean? But, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. A lot of beeps. Bleep, you know, they're, they're, yeah, I think that's, that's what a lot of it is, is, you know, when I've had stuff thrown at me and it's not big stuff, French fries, you know, I'm not going to name the place, you know, but, um, you know, as a specialist, you get, um, they, they come at you because yeah. you're right there against the wall, pretty warming up everything. So they're on you for four hours, you know? And, uh, <laughs> oh, man. yeah. So in the, the one thing you get good at is you're just talking to yourself the entire game. Like the whole time, like literally for four hours, I'm just talking to myself, trying to make sure I can't hear the outside noise. And, uh, you know, I, I'll say this, the, the juicy stuff that I hear, I, I can't say because you know, it is, people say some bad things. You yeah, know what I'm I mean? sure. I'm stuff sure. Bad. Yeah. But, uh, you know, man, people say some funny stuff, man. And it's like, you just, you just hear them and you're just like, all right, man, I hope you have a better night. If that's how you feel, I hope you have a better night, you know? So, uh, yeah. but in this business, you, uh, you get, you get pretty good at just ignoring that stuff. It's got to be good, like, especially like a, you know, a walk off or something where you can, you know, uh -huh. run out, run past them and Maybe. like, peace. Philly was awesome. I didn't even punt in the Philly game, but uh, they uh, that that one that place was wild. You know, Phil Philadelphia, their fan base is diehard. You know, yeah. So when hitting that game winner, I mean, 
game winning field goals. That's the one thing I miss about kicking field goals is I miss those moments, you know, but holding it's the same thing. And, um, just being a part of the operation and helping Dustin do whatever he can is, is cool. So when you have those moments, it's awesome. Yeah. It's just, it, I, I have so much respect for like just the process, like the snap needs to be perfect. The hold needs to be perfect. And the kick, like you got, like, it's just a crazy, like, it's something I don't think people think about that much. Like how important every one of those moving yeah. parts are. Cause how many so, of those three moving parts do you get in a play? There's not many like that. So, so much goes into it. Like if, if people saw the amount of reps that me and Matt and Dustin do on a weekly basis, I mean, so, so, so many reps, you know, and, and, um, and the job is too, it's like, there's sometimes where, you know, like Dustin saves us and there's times where we save him, you know, whatever it is, you know, and that's the thing about us together is, is being there to make sure like my job is to do my job as best I can every time. Same for Matt, same for Dustin. And, um, you know, so much goes into it. Does it ever flash? I, I'm, have you seen Ace Ventura? No. Okay. So in Ace Ventura, there's this, the whole thing at the end is all about laces out. And there's this kicker that goes crazy and he's like, loses his mind at the end. It's this whole wrap up and it's like laces out. He's just like yeah. loses his mind and focuses on it for decades. What, yeah. how stressful is it to get that thing around and get the laces perfect? You know, and with, with a good snapper like Matt, you know, the, the thing that's crazy about it is, the, the way to be a good holder and to, to be a good snapper is you've got to catch the ball at the same exact spot every time. You know, it's like, even if I'm that much off, that is literally half a rotation to where I'm, I'm here. You know oh, what I wow. mean? Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. Like that much, off, if I catch it just a little bit deeper, the laces could be here and that those are tough, you know? And, um, you know, it's just a feel thing. You feel it with your hands. You don't really see it with your eyes. It's like, I'll feel it with my thumb and it's here, you know? And, uh, you know, it's just, like I said, it's, it's the same thing with everyone so much, so many reps, so many, everything that, you know, it's so when, uh, when the game's online, you're ready to go. Awesome. All right. Well, we'll get you out of here on this. Um, we, we w- went to our website and we had some people post some questions for you. Um, and we got one from Morthinian. He said, so Ty, if NFL changed the punting rules and you had to punt something other than a football, what would you punt? Uh, soccer ball. Good answer. You know, I never played soccer, but uh, I think that's l- logically probably the uh, the only thing that, made, yeah, that would unless be. unless they made like a Nerf soccer ball that had like extra velocity and could yeah, go yeah, like yeah. three hundred yard punts. That'd be pretty awesome. Yeah, that that'd be pretty cool. You know, <laughs> and, um, yeah, but yeah, probably soccer ball. All right. Well, thank you for that. And then thank you so much, Ty, for your time, man. It was such a pleasure uh, meeting you. And uh, thank you for everything you've done for us fans the uh, last few years. And we, we look forward to a whole bunch more. Yeah, brother. No, it's great to meet you guys. Thank you for everything you do. And, uh, you know, the for the diehard fans and the Charger fans, you know, just for myself and the team, you guys are greatly appreciated. We appreciate that. We'll talk to you. Uh, hopefully talk to you soon. All right, brother. See you, man. Take it easy. Ty freaking long, dude. We like, had a captain. We had a captain on our podcast, yes. guys. Oh, crazy. crazy. So, I, I mean, just it, it, it's such a nice insight into the special team side of things because it is just that most underappreciated side of football that, as we've seen, especially in this postseason with kickers and everything like that, like it can really make or break a game. Like, yeah. And, uh, and him explaining that, like, you know, the catching of the ball, if it's off by just a, a little bit, like that could just yep. ruin everything. And that's how, that's how I Finkel became Einhorn. Einhorn right. is Finkel. <laughs> Einhorn is Finkel. Finkel is Einhorn. It's just that, that much. Oh man, Ty, put it on your, your Netflix list, buddy. I don't care where I, or buy it. It's I good. promise you, you won't maybe, regret it. Maybe it wouldn't be good. Maybe it'll get into his head. Maybe you should stay away from it. This actually that's probably true. a Ace good Ventura thing. 2. Don't yeah. watch the first one. When nature one. calls. Right. Yeah. There's yeah. no football in that When one. he comes out of the yeah. rhino, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> and he eats the guano. <laughs> yeah. Guano bowls. Mm, guano. Like what set. is that? <laughs> <laughs> no, but it was it was so awesome that he he came on and learned yeah. a lot more about like what the routine was, right, how it yeah. all worked. I was really hoping that they had some kind of special toilet or yes. some kind of party. Executive toilet, dude. Yeah. 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 Somebody, you know, give throw these guys a bone like a they work harder spot, in that something seat. yeah where they sit like first class on the plane to games something, yeah. something different you know like something a little nicer right yeah throw the guy yeah. a bone throw um bone. all right well ty long thank you so much for coming on this show i am continuously tickled by the the players that were able to get on this and 
uh, and you are no exception, sir. Thank you so much. Um, all right. Well, now it is time to go on to the next segment. It is fan focus. And this guy got some, uh, some firsthand experience. Fun, fun about the Pro Bowl. All right. Let's see if he made it any more fun. All right, guys, we are back with another fan focus, and we are super pumped to have Joe from Las Vegas. What's up, Joe? What is up, Bolt fam? What's going on, Kevin? <laughs> uh, not much, man. I'm super pumped to have you, and I, I'm thrilled you're on because, you know, we're on Twitter all the time, and we see you rocking the uh, the Pro Bowl. So we're going to get to that. I got to know yeah. more about the inside track on, on how everything went down. But before we get started on that, how did you become a Charger fan? Um, funny story, um, though. <laughs> Just, I'm going to go all the way back to my days back on Guam. Um, Let's do you know. it. So, uh, so I wasn't necessarily introduced to football. Just, I mean, football was obviously big on Guam, but uh, as, as far as uh, NFL, I mean, we treated it like a holiday, right? Super Bowl for us was a Monday. So seriously, everyone in class would stop doing anything related to our studies, we'd all watch the Super Bowl. Awesome. Right? Um, so the sad story is that I watched the Niners beat the Chargers, right? Uh, at, so school? At, yeah, school? at school? At school? Oh, that's, that's even school. worse. Oh, yeah. It was, it was rough, <laughs> right? So between the Niners, the Broncos, during those that, that time. Um, but, you know, going to high school, I, I guess you could have said I could have been a Bears fan or a Chargers fan because the, the when I went into high school, they had a football player visiting our high school and it was none other than Dick Butkus. Oh, wow. So, you know, you have a hall of famer visiting. I'm, I had no idea who this guy was, but you know, he made a speech. Uh, he gave a speech about, you know, being drug free, all that stuff. But interestingly enough, you know, that, that kind of planted the seed, like, you know, what is NFL? What is this hall of fame thing? Go, you know, he's a hall of famer. So, uh, needs to say that that sparked the interest. So every time there was the Super Bowl, you know, we'd watch it. We're not, we're not paying attention to school or anything. We're just watching the game. So I moved to San Diego back in 2000 when I was in the military and I got transferred to Japan, you know, and funny story, you know, I'm driving, always passing by the stadium, not thinking anything of it just because I've never been introduced to football other than I watched the Padres play while they were at Qualcomm, Qualcomm back in 2000. So, um, I, I moved to Japan 2006, a couple of guys like, you know, they, they knew I was, I came from San Diego. They're like, Joe, what's going on with your chargers? And, you know, didn't really click in just yet. And I'm like, you know, what? I know what you're talking about, you know? And, um, I, I, I watched the game and I'm like, Holy moly. I'm like, this is, this is crazy. And I, you know, that kind of started me getting back into sports and, um, and just really investing in like, you know, how to play the game, like uh, figure out, you know, what's the DB, what's wide receiver, what's a running back, quarterback, yeah. you know, all the different positions. And we started playing that while I was in Japan with, uh, with uh, all the military bases. So, you know, I, I love playing sports. So that was that, you know, that kind of just fueled the fire for the most part. So when I moved back to San Diego in 2007, my sister for my birthday, my sister gives me an LT uh, Navy jersey. Nice. Right? I'm like, oh, hey, cool. You know, hey, I, I guess it was meant to be. Yeah. Right? And I um, ended up uh, that following season, 2007, I bought season tickets. And I was, you know, I was going to every game. So I went through all the highs and lows of, you know, the, the North Turner days. And, uh, you know, and the, the toughest memory, obviously, for me was, us losing to the Jets yeah. that last year for LT. And I was just like, man, this is not a memory I want to have. But, yeah. You know, it was the, I mean, you know, it was a, such a phenomenal year. You know, we finished 13 and three LT. And I'm like, man, we're, we're going to do this. We're going to do this. And um, yeah, it, you know, with the folks just not tackling uh, green, I was just like, oh, all right. Yeah. yeah so. But yeah, no, I've been a fan since. And um, yeah, I, I mean, obviously I, they moved. Uh, I always move. So, you know, I'm like, why would I get mad at a team for moving? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just a nomad, <laughs> you know? So yeah, no, I stuck with the team. And it, 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 it does break my heart because, you know, I had a lot of friends and family uh, in San Diego who, you know, were diehard fans. And, you know, when they they announced the move, you know, a lot of them were in that footage that, you know, when Snoop posted 
people like yeah. dumping their jerseys. Those were my buddies yeah. doing that. And so, yeah, no, it broke my heart. So, yeah. yeah. Well, we're glad you're still still on board and clearly very on board because you were at the Pro Bowl this this last week. Um, tell us that experience, what it was like being there, being a part of all the festivities with our with our boys being in the game. Oh man, it so it was great. Um, I mean, Wednesday through uh, through Saturday, obviously for the it was literally five minutes away from my house. It was at the Las Vegas ballpark. Sweet. So, I mean, the, the tickets were free. And so for us, it was like, why not? You know, it's in Las Vegas. What are the chances you're going to be ever be able to visit, the, go to the Pro Bowl or even see the players? And uh, so, you know, we went to the skills show, just met up there, you know, all the diehard bold club folks. And uh, we met up with some of the fans. And then I, I, I one day, uh, the following day, I met up with some of uh, not only diehard, but also bolt pride was out there. And Sweet. All the different charger. There were all tons of charger fi- fans out there. And it was for me, it was surprising. I'm like, there's a lot of Herbert jerseys around here. Yeah. Like when James jersey, I'm like, it was just flooded. And on, um, the last practice on Saturday, you know, I, I had the opportunity to bring my kids. So it was pretty awesome. So, you know, my, my son, he, every time he sees Herbert or says like, I like Herbert <laughs> touchdown, go chargers, you know? And, and so, so he had a good time. Um, and he always reminds me that he loves Herbert, you know, so it's, it's always cool to see. And, um, but, uh, the, I will say, uh, Megan and her team, man, they, they, they came and saw us, they interviewed every single one of us. Like you had the, the media crew going down the aisles because they saw so many charger fans and they were just interviewing them. And I believe that they just posted it today. And yeah, the, the, his nickname, I saw you on that one. He's on the yeah. nickname. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's was, awesome. It, yeah. So it was pretty, it was pretty cool that, um, you know, she, she visited every fan. So after that, I asked her, I'm like, Hey, where do we need to be so we could get our stuff signed by the team? And like, Oh, just go over on this side. Um, we'll get everything signed with you for, uh, for you guys. Right. And then so cool. right after that was done, after Corey had signed my, the, the helmet, um, I asked Megan again, I'm like, Hey, a lot of us are going to be here tomorrow. Where do you need us to be? It's like, stay on this side, Herbert. And those guys just, want to go straight to the charger fans they didn't want to go anywhere else so after that i mean you had uh ray sean show up uh derwin uh justin i mean they came by i mean you had raider fans and all, all other fans like asking for her <laughs> signature it was hilarious to watch. <laughs> frauds <laughs> oh yeah no, it, was, it, it was crazy but you know what our boy got pro bowl mvp I love man, it you know it and it's just it was just so great to you know, you hear the booze from the, the Raider fans who are at the game, but you know, it's, it just tells you, you know, how special of a quarterback we have, man. I'm, I'm so pumped up that we, I, I it's just amazing. You go from Philip to Justin, it's crazy. you know, and the, the talent level, just if anything, it's, uh, it's elevated, you know, I mean, just the athleticism, the accuracy, man, the, Dude, the, the touch and velocity that he yeah. throws at. Oh, man. It makes it look effortless. And I love that we no. live rent free in all those Raider fans' yeah. heads. It's oh, yeah. pretty fantastic. It's pretty fantastic. Yeah, it's great. It's great. Um, so awesome. Well, let's get you out of here on this. Like, uh, we always like to ask, like, your biggest Charger moment, the biggest memory you have of being a Charger fan. Um, so I, I, I have two. Um, or, I, yeah, I, well, technically three now. Uh, at each stadium that we played at. Oh, sweet. So Qualcomm, um, biggest one so far, our la- la- latest memory was 2013, Eric Weddle going for the the fake and the, the push and us making that field goal and then them yeah. missing it and us winning the game. Um, that's qual- my last Qualcomm memory. And then uh, StubHub or Dignity Health Center, whichever you want to call it. Yeah. Um, us just destroying... Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. The Packers. The Packers. It, it was so such sweet. a, yeah, it was great that, you know, and, uh, and obviously SoFi was, um, um, just the Browns game. I mean, I was there and I was just like, Oh my God, nuts. <laughs> we're just scoring every second. He just scored. He just scored. <laughs> yeah. And you know, he's like, don't go to the bathroom. Scored. They're going to be scoring it while you're oh, there. I know. I know. And you know, it, it's funny story that, um, at the Pro Bowl, we we kind of teased one of our our buddies and like, you know what? You're the blitz. 
you know, every time you walk away, somebody's coming over and, you know, we're just teasing. I'm like, just stick around. And, you know, so, so <laughs> yeah. they, they'd be able to, um, you know, see the players. So, yeah. yeah, no, it's needless to say, like, I've at least had a, an awesome memory at each stadium. And, you know, thankfully that those memories have been all W's, you know, love um, it. And hopefully many more W's to come, yeah. Joe. That's that's what we're pulling for. So, dude, it yeah. was it was a pleasure having you, man. It was really, really nice meeting you. And uh, we really appreciate your time. Yeah, no, awesome, man. Uh, it's always a pleasure listening to you guys. Got to finally catch up on all the, the episodes. I mean, the, the last one was pretty hilarious. And the one before that, too. So <laughs> Thanks, <dude>. We appreciate <laughs> but, it. Yeah, I appreciate you guys, man, starting what you did in 2019. So um, especially me coming off my podcast sabbatical, you know, so there you like, go. All right, man. Right. <laughs> a lot more Charger podcasts and a lot of good content. So There's, I can't as, complain. as a Charger fan that you literally could fill up a whole day worth of content with yeah. all of the podcasts that are out there. It's a, It's awesome. I love it. So it's yep. great. So all all right, Joe, we appreciate it, dude. We will definitely catch up with you soon. Yep, definitely, Kevin. All right. Cool. Okay, okay, love you, bye. Okay, love you, bye. Let's go, Joe. That was great, dude. It's awesome. That's so I, cool. I really yeah. want to go to a Pro Bowl practice and get my shit signed Well, so I mean, bad. that seemed to be the place to go because, like, yeah. not a lot of people were able to get signatures during this season, obviously, because of COVID. And so right. this was just, like, I'm watching yeah, the videos kind of, and, like, everybody's, like... Yeah, they don't, care if they, they don't care if the players get COVID in the offseason. They're like, no. go ahead, get sick. We don't care. It was it was funny, too, when he was like, you know, other teams were handing down their jerseys for Justin to sign. It's like, you guys suck. Get out of here. No. Get out of here. <laughs> Shut up. Get out of here. Yeah, that was that was awesome watching those videos. And I'm pretty sure I saw him in the uh and it was the most recent social media post of where yeah, they were asking about that. Herbert. They were asking yeah. the uh you know, what did oh, you yeah. think the, I think the nickname was? His I still nickname. go with War Daddy. War Daddy is, is, War. is a Brisket good one. Brisket is a pretty funny nickname. Brisket was good. <laughs> um, all right. Well, Joe, uh, quite the world traveler and uh, glad that you landed with the Chargers. You really could have gone just about anywhere, especially with the seeing Dick Buckus and coming to talk to you in class. That's that's pretty special pretty but cool. uh yeah, yeah. You yeah your school with the Chargers, is way man. cooler than mine yeah you get watching to watch super bowl, bowl. <laughs> Dick Butkus game <laughs> yeah, crap guam's the place to be yeah. um, Go. all right joe thank you again for coming on and uh chatting with my man kev and uh now it is time to go on to the next segment it is ask bolt fam off season edition <laughs> time to put your money where your mouth is <laughs> guys. Don't jam a thumb up his butthole. That's what you do. I wet myself in excitement. Oh, so hungry. Your thoughts are like totally appreciated. <laughs> Catch you later, dude. Okay, love you, boy. All right, gang. It is Ask Bolt Fam, and we start this one off with an old favorite, Gruder McBolt. Woohoo! Who asks the question. Guys, who is your daddy, and what does he do? <laughs> Kindergarten Cop is an underrated movie. I need opinion. to I need to revisit it. That's highly I mean, underrated. That's the one line that it's, I'll always remember. Came but. out in 1990. That is an old <laughs> movie. That's the year you were born, Kyle. That's the year I was born, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Good. You missed out. Time good flies. Movie. Yeah. All right. Well, one. who was your daddy and what does he do? <laughs> well, my daddy's uh Justin Herbert, and he plays quarterback for the Los Angeles Chargers. <laughs> mm, wow. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Bad Papa baby. Papa my, Duggins. <laughs> My dad's name is David, and he's my dad. And he is my dad. That's it. I stole stole your answer. Same answer. Same answer. Yeah, same answer. (laughs) Stole it. Wow. Uh, Ditto. All right. Well, my dad is Jim. He's retired. Papa Wooldog. Papa Wooldog, as some know. Uh, And he's the coolest. And he rocks. And his beard dad. is equally as rad. He's my dad. A little he looks, more white. And he looks just like me. He does. Yeah. I mean, you guys are spot <laughs> identical. On I can see the difference, but other people are like, <laughs> you guys look exactly the same. Yeah. And Especially like on your birthday, some of the old throwback photos of your well, dad. Well, now that I've got a that bald head, that doesn't really yeah. help either. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> The beard um, game is so strong in the wool, wool dog clan, we, though. Yes, the woolly <laughs> clan, we grow good beards, that is for sure. So there you go, Gruder McBolt. Thank you for asking the question. Thanks, Let's dude. Move it on now to Blonded Surfer. Who asked the question? So just wanted to kind of calm down from our erratic fans on the topic of Herbert versus Burrow. 
They will forever be compared to each other as Philip was to Eli and Ben. Let's not get sucked into it. Burrow's already defeated Mahomes in his own stadium in the AFC Championship. That's far more than enough for all sorts of crazy critics to put him above Herbert. So I suggest we don't give a single flying floating f*** about it. (laughs) When we take home that Lombardi and Herbert raises his Super Bowl MVP, MVP trophy, will all that comparison matter? Exactly. To add a little question in here, I'll give you guys a scenario. From a purely outsider's perspective, it seems that Mike Williams values his relationship and experience above money. I think a three-year deal worth $43 million sounds pretty reasonable, roughly $13 million a year. But if he wants anything above, say, $16 million, I think it'd be best for the team to let him test free agency. What do you guys think? K, love you, bye. This is tough. But yes, I agree with the whole, like, it, we're just going to be cha- eating a snake eating its tail on this exactly. thing. It's, it's, it's a never-ending cycle of just right. shit with this comparison. So exactly. Just... Burrow got there first. Congratulations. Good. It's not about who gets there first. It's about who wins the most. What matters is the king of That's right. L.A. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's what really matters. That is what really matters. So, um, um, but the Mike Williams, as far as, you know, a 13 to $16 million deal, as far as Blonded Surfer thinks, um, I can't remember. What was his pay this year? It was pretty uh, high. He was, he was still on his rookie contract. So I know, but we did that. It was that fifth, fifth year extension, extension that yeah. Yeah, pushed him up a little bit. So he got $15 million this year. So the 13 to $16 million, that doesn't sound unreasonable. Yeah, you, you, you would imagine he's not going to want less, right? After having sure. a breakout year. Sure, so, sure. I don't see him taking less than that. I mean, you look at the guys that are getting paid around that $16 million a year. Mm-hmm. Um, like $16 million right now is Adam Thielen, Brandon Cooks, Robert Woods, Mike Evans, um, Chris Godwin. Cooper and I'd put, him, I'd put him there. I'd put right. Mike Williams in that group. Right. I would right. have no and, problem saying his name with those guys. Yeah, exactly. And and that those are those are not contract signed this year. Every year the contracts are going up, right? Right. Yeah. I mean, Keenan Allen's getting paid 20 million a year. So if he's getting paid 16, 13 to 16, I think that that's I think that that's a good deal with it. Uh, a wide receiver contract in 2022. Mm-hmm. Um and then Just you ins- obviously incentives, run. baby. That's what I would yeah. do. Like, guess what you can do with Justin? You can get some incentive filled right. contracts. Right. It is kind of like, surprising that that yeah. that there aren't more contracts that are incentive based where it's like it should be I would imagine that it should be based on your performance not just being there and whether or not you perform like yeah like rock out and if you rock out we'll gladly throw the money at you like why wouldn't yeah. we because you did you did great kid exactly so um 13 to 16 million sounds sounds fair but if he if he wanted more would you let him test free agency or would you just throw whatever money he wanted within reason. I think you got to remember no. when it comes down to it, it's, we still have Justin Herbert. So right. you, you, he's going to make, he's going to throw to people. He's not just going to stop throwing the ball. Cause Mike Williams isn't on the team. Mm-hmm. Do, do I think that's his like favorite, like escape plan or like go to big time playmaker? Yes. That is who it is mm-hmm. this yeah. year, especially. So I hope, I hope we get something done. Like that would be nice. Know. That's my I number think we one. Will. I think we will. I think that that's, I think he's the most important guy for offense. We need to win now. We don't need to bring in somebody that doesn't know the offense needs to get comfortable with Justin mm-hmm. takes a little time to get going. We're in a win now mindset. So let's get the guy that we already know is fits the system and plug and play and let's go. All right. There you go. Blonded surfer. Thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on now to Kellen. Not dead yet. Certified fresh yet. Who has asked the question. With all the great games in our Chargers history, it would be hard to recommend a game for a new fan to watch. What is a Chargers game each of you guys would recommend to watch? Mine is the Epic in Miami, a game of three games. And to them Raiders, may they shove their heads up their own behinds to smell the excrements that best represents how they play. (laughs) That was the perfect voice voice choice for that. Absolutely. 100%. And lucky for you, Friday, Bolt History, guess what it is? Is it really? Like just, Epic in Miami. Hey, there you go. So 
Tune in. All right. Yeah, that was that game was I I've, I've watched the bolt history already and there's a lot into that game. That was a oh, wild no game. Doubt. No doubt. Uh um, I would say my go-to watch game is the Chargers W over the Colts in overtime in the playoffs. Um that was back in the 2008 season. Mm-hmm. I just I, Darren Sproles. I and I think the main thing that I loved about that was Qualcomm just going absolutely crazy. Right. That was pretty um, wild. Because it was really fun to see our fan base in in full effect. Mm-hmm. I I love game we pull out at the last minute. And I still think the one where I just I vividly remember losing my mind and really seeing all Charger fans lose their mind was us beating the Chiefs, um, just aggressively beating them um, with the two-point conversion. Like that that game, we were just down, yeah, and then we kept coming teams. back, and then oh, down. Oh, yeah, yeah, back. yeah, yeah. There's a lot of other good games that you could watch, and going back into like the Fouts era, there's some awesome games back there. Mm-hmm. But I just love me some Phil, man. It, Absolutely. Yeah, good. I'd love me some Phil. Um, I mean, if you're if you're a new fan, I, I mean, unless you have a really healthy appreciation for the history, I think you want to watch something that's more current uh, to get, you know, pumped up for what's to come with this team. And I would recommend the game that I went to, the Cleveland Browns Charger yeah, game from this past pretty, season. <laughs> I mean, better than that. There was, uh, that was such a roller coaster. That is just up and down, like crazy plays being made. You get, it used, I mean, Mike Williams, that, that was a hell of, hell of a game for Mike Williams. And uh, there was just a lot of, <laughs> it's a lot of drama. I remember seeing, there was a, I, I don't remember who posted it. It might've been PFF or it might've been like Fox Sports or something like that. But they posted like uh, the top, best games of the season and Chargers had like three or four of those games just because dude whenever the Chargers play it's a freaking exciting game like there's you are gonna be on the edge of your seat from start to finish so um yeah pick pick any one of those games for sure but uh Kellen not dead yet glad you're not dead yet thank you for asking the question and welcome thanks for joining us welcome yes absolutely Keep keep these coming these are great uh let's move it on now to CD who asked the question? Gerard Butler from 300 versus Brad Pitt in Troy. Who you got and why? All right. Well, this is a very important <laughs> We've question. We've made it to the offseason, boys. It is, yes. <laughs> I love these. It is that time of year. It is. All right. Who would you rather have on the Chargers and what position would they play? I think Gerard I think, Butler. Yeah. He's bigger. I, I saw. I, and he's I, not as drunk. He's not person. as much of a drunkard. I feel like Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt was like hung over the whole movie. <laughs> Brad Pitt gave me like Mahomes vibes in that game. Yeah, like kind of walked yeah. around a little funny. Aaron like, Rodgers vibes. Yeah. Like, I don't really care to be out here, but I'm really good at this. So I'm just going to do right. it. I'm not looking for somebody to go boy. down with an Achilles injury either. You know what I mean? Yeah. There you yeah. Go. Oh, good That's point. Weak. Good you point. I mean? And Gerard Butler's like a team guy. Rallies right. the troops. He is a team Even guy. Even in the face of adversity. Right. Even if so, he's full of arrows, he's still standing. He's still he's fighting. He's still fighting. So. Yeah. Screw yeah, you. I'm put, still going to throw this. Throw him on the defensive human. line. I'm all about it. <laughs> yeah, he's a safety type for sure. <laughs> mm-hmm. Safety type for sure, murderer. There you go. Yeah. All right, CD, thank you for asking the Good important question. question. Love question. It. Let's move it on now to Bolt Up LA, who asked the question. As a Bolt fan who lives in the LA or C area, <laughs> I see more fans of outside teams like the Niners, Cowboys, and Raiders. So Rams fans I see are more the older generation that supported them when they were uh, here before. There is definitely a fight for LA between the Rams and Chargers and agree. It will take time and more winning for the Bolts to gain more support and be taken seriously in LA. I definitely hope the Chargers feel a sense of urgency. Knowing Burrow and the Rams are in the Super Bowl question. Since some of you live outside of Cali, how are you received when people see you rocking Chargers gear? Especially curious about the one who lives in Kansas City. Great part as always, guys. Okay, love you. Bye. Certified friends. Hey. Hey. Delayed, but there. <laughs> Sometimes I got to look right. back into my logs and uh, <laughs> cross-reference. Welcome That's to right. the... Well, yeah, thank you for joining us. Absolutely. Um, uh, yeah, it sucks. Like, <laughs> how are you received? Bad? I don't... I'm received with looks. Like, there's never like a, 
I'm not, I don't ever get shit. It's more just like people giving me looks. And I love that my son is so on board with this because there was one morning, it was the Friday. It's always known. It was the Friday before the Chiefs played uh, the Bengals. And I laid his clothes out for him the night before because we have to get up early and I'm not about to do that when I'm like sleeping. So Mm -hmm. I laid out his clothes and he comes upstairs wearing his Herbert jersey. I'm like, I didn't lay that out for you, dude. He's like, I know. I know, dad. (laughs) I, I was know, like, holy father. shit, what have I done? <laughs> you should have. So I don't know what his, I know there's one teacher when I drop him off, he looks at me like, fuck, <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> like, because he, 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 he wears case, he used to not wear his KC stuff and he wears it every Friday on, during football season and I wear mm. my Charger shit. So it's like. Just because it's Stellan. My son. So <laughs> yeah. rent free there in Ridgeway Elementary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, I I don't know what it is, man. Like, I don't always wear char- wear Charger gear out in public, but when I do, it always seems to attract somebody. Like, whether it's a Raider fan, like, I, whether I have to interact with some Raider fan, it's just like, golly, like, how do I avoid you guys? Um, or just somebody that just wants to give me shit, like, yeah, I used to be a Charger fan until they moved, and it's like... <laughs> yeah. You're like, oh All crap! Right. They moved. Yeah. When? Oh, shit. When? 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 Like, what? Yeah. <laughs> like it, it, it is kind of surprising. Like I'll go out to dinner with like a Charger hat and like, oh yeah, I used to be a Charger fan, and oh yeah, I, I like the Charger. I used to be a season ticket holder. I did that at the fair. That some guy that was serving me ice cream was just like, yep, used to be a Charger fan, but uh, can't do it no more. And it's like, all right, like. I, I don't know if it's because like these are all people like I live in Idaho, so I don't know if it's the exodus of people that are leaving California yeah, going to Idaho or, and and they're still salty or what the issue is. But uh, very rarely am I greeted with like a go Chargers or anything like that. Like, are you ever even do you ever get anybody saying go Chargers to you, Kev, in, in Missouri? I've had I've had two. Uh, yeah. One one guy was passing through and he had a San Diego plate and he chased me down in the parking lot of a grocery <laughs> store. Um, and the other guy, there's a Charger fan that lives in like a 60 mile radius of me. I don't know who he oh. is. So if anybody ever hears this and knows, a, you just a get Charger a spidey fan, sense that he's there, around. There's a vibe. I just sense good energy. A miles, smart spidey, man. He's probably extremely handsome. Hmm. Um, it's 60 mile radius from Columbia, Missouri. If you're a Charger fan, find find us on Twitter. I need to know who you are. There you go. Okay. Yes. Do you travel outside of California much there, Kyle? No. Okay. All right. Well, the question does not include you. No. So does the vault of apply. LA, <laughs> thank Bye. you Bye. for asking the question. <laughs> Appreciate it. Uh, let's move it on now to Bolt Gang, who asked the question. God, it felt good to see Herbert play again. Who is one player on the NFC you'd want on the charges? <laughs> <laughs> I love that voice. So much. Oh, I thought of okay. another voice for you. Okay. Do you know the you've seen Pet Cemetery? Uh, not enough to. Okay, to we'll, remember. we'll get it, we'll get it prepared for next. Week. Okay, the old you. man yeah. from Pet Cemetery. Oh, well, that's uh, <laughs> that's uh, it's the Fred dude from Gwyn, the monsters. It, it, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, it's, it's I know who awesome. That is. Sorry, okay. I, I just remembered that. <laughs> My apologies. Let's back to the question. Back to the question, back to the question at question. hand. NFC player you'd want on the Chargers. And we're saying money doesn't really. It doesn't matter how yeah, much this it is costs. just. Yeah, this is just whoever. For fun. Yeah, I'd say Devonte Adams. Okay, that's fun. Be really cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd be pretty. I, yeah, I get behind that. I mean, I'm literally afraid it's not working right now. I, w- I would say Aaron Donald. I think that guy would just be an absolute yeah. ch- uh, playmaker and just change everything yeah. for the Chargers if we had him on the line for sure. I think I think I'd go with Donald probably over Adams just because you guys we are need obsessed that. with Aaron Donald. He's oh my just God. A, two weeks in a row now. Hey, he's a monster. Hey, bro a, loved about Aaron Donald. When Dude, is a new answer, guys. <laughs> Spice it up. Jesus. I don't want it. Aaron Donald. It's like going to church and answering Jesus for every day. You guys are boring. <laughs> what are you here for? Jesus. If it's the answer, then it's the answer. What are you going to say? Like, I know, but come on. Noah. Let's talk about something. <laughs> All right. Let's do. He's probably going to retire. It'd be fun to see what Gronk would do on this team. Good answers. Like, it would be interesting it, to good see. Answer. Thank you. I, I'd just be interested in the social media and the press conferences. It would be very interesting. Does not seem yeah. like a Charger player. 
But I'd be curious. He'd like, have fun in L.A. though. Oh, he yeah. would. Maybe a little too much fun. A little too much fun. <laughs> don't don't let him go to the Raiders. That's just not. Don't, don't let it happen. There you go. All right. Well, there you go, Bolt Gang. Thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on now to Kyle T, who asked the question. Justin could use a true pass catching tight end. <laughs> what are three tight ends you think we should pursue in free agency or the draft? I say get Mark Andrews now. Just do it. <laughs> you owe it to yourself. Make our dreams come true, Tom Telesco. Bolt the f*** up. <laughs> a Shia LaBeouf and yeah, that sorry. Nike ad. Well we done, Kyle. A Shia. Um, if, if they did Mark Andrews, like the trade involved of that would be, I don't even know, because they just they just signed him to like a huge contract and he's like their best weapon over there. Yeah, and they, that offense needs a tight end oh, like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Imagine yeah, Mark Andrews with a real off. throwing quarterback, though. Like that would be sweet. Yeah, you're not going to pry. I him like away. I like Gasecki from the Dolphins. I think that's like one of the splashier tight ends you could go get. Mm-hmm. I just remember every time I watched the the Dolphins, whether it be watching them hoping they would lose, or watching them and hoping Tua wouldn't do so good, or watching them and whatever else. Gasecki was always good, like always making catches, always a problem for whatever defense he was playing. Um, so I think Gasecki would be my, he's the one that I'm the most interested in. And people are saying he's going to be expensive, but you know, what are you going to spend your money on? Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm looking at the, the list of uh, free agents and they, it, take this for what it is. I didn't watch any of these games. So if there, there might be something weird about this, but uh, Dalton Schultz from Dallas, who's only going to be about 26 years old, uh, played in all 17 games, uh, had over 800 yards and eight touchdowns, uh, which seems to be the most of the free agent tight ends uh, that are going to be hitting the market here. So, and he didn't, he was hardly paid anything. This guy must have been an undrafted free agent or something because he pick, got paid like less than a million dollars. So, well, be, thing is would, like, that would be like a Tom Telesco coupon God type pickup if he were to to go that route. Yeah. It's hard to tell where he's going to go because there's so right. many different roads you could go down. I think the two people I'm kind of seeing people talk about the most is Gusecki or um, Njoku. Njoku. Yeah. yeah, which it makes sense. He's a problem. Like you just you need a really great. I wish we could have Hunter Henry back, but obviously, that's yeah, besides that would be the good. point. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I, I'm kind of pulling for Gusecki. I really liked watching him play. He always, He's like one of those guys that runs amazing routes as a tight end. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, we've got Steven Anderson. Hopefully we bring him back. And we got some guys that could do the blocking, do the dirty work. And then you get a guy that's a, a matchup nightmare. And you have enough matchup nightmares out on the field. <laughs> Justin Herbert's going to get to, he'll have a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's just a matter of if you go try to draft I don't, I just, right. I don't yeah. know. I don't I don't think I, I don't, but from what I've heard, as far as tight end prospects, there's no like Kyle Pitts out there. It's there's a no standout. Class this year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's no standout above and beyond like really. And it's not like a deep class. So it's not as if we're going to be able to get a more important piece in the first round and still have a stud sitting there waiting for us in the second. So yeah. uh, I don't see tight end happening in the draft. I think, I think Njoku is like a, he's a kind of a boomer bust guy. Um, he's had drought, little droughts of not producing, but he's mm-hmm. also in Cleveland with a Baker Mayfield. quarterback. Yeah. Right. So yeah. put him on an offense where he can, he can shine. I think like, he could, he could, and he, he hasn't produced enough to get paid like all that much. I think mm-hmm. we could get him on a cheaper deal. So mm-hmm. I, I wouldn't be upset if we went that avenue. Okay. All right. Well, there you go, Kyle T. Three names to think about. Thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on now to Danny Lags, who asked the question. Hey, yo, young bucks, wake up, wake up. The Pro Bowl is over. Justin Herbert got two touchdowns and AFC MVP. Whoa, Chargers got to get him a Mark Andrews type level player, please. Did you guys hear that they booed Herbert on stage? The odd. Audacity, mother has got a death wish, I tell you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, that, that truly was the highlight of, 
Well, okay. The other highlight, I think, of the Pro Bowl was watching Patrick Mahomes get get tackled. That was also kind of sweet. That was pretty, that was pretty good. <laughs> I mean, like for quarterbacks, for it to be like a two-hand touch game then to actually see somebody like take him down. You could see it in his face. He was just like, what the f***, man? Like, I thought we were playing a two-hand touch football here. <laughs> I thought we were cool, bro. Yeah, what the hell, man? Somebody uh, made a good point on the whole Pro Bowl thing. Somebody was like, somebody um, mentioned us. It was like, instead of the Pro Bowl, it's the last two teams. House of Hain, I think. Yeah. House of Hain is yeah. the last two teams, and whoever wins gets the first round pick. Right. I think it's great. That's awesome idea. That, that's fun. That's well, that, something to play for. Well, that's meaningful football. That yeah, you know, they're fighting for game. something. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I think that would be totally fun. Absolutely. To yeah. switch that out. Um, and yeah, the, <laughs> the booze, the booze are delicious. Yeah. That was yeah, tasty. I love them. Gotta yeah. love it. They just boo him because he's so much better than their quarterback. Right. Yeah. yeah. Meanwhile, just he's jealous. Yeah. Meanwhile, just he's jelly. the MVP and you're not. So yeah. yeah. Put that and in your cars pipe and smoke at home. It. Right. And cars at home. Yeah. Um, all right. Danny Lags, thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on now to Swim Shady, who asked the question. The Pro Bowl, more like the toilet bowl. Am I right, baby? Also, <laughs> am I the only one that wanted Herbert to throw a rocket to one of the kids? Ha! Uh, Anyways, my question is if, and that's a big if, we don't get Mike Will back, should we try and get Devontae? Imagine Adams catching Herbie's balls, baby! <laughs> so, so let me get this straight. You wanted to see him <laughs> throw some rockets at some seven and eight year olds? Oh man, just beat him right in the head. <laughs> that's a commercial waiting to happen. That I would a, love to see I, it. I remember there, what was it? It was a Peyton Manning commercial where like, he was like basically abusing children. <laughs> and back when that commercial came out, it was like, oh, well and good. Mm -hmm. And now it's like, oh no, oh no, we can't oh, make no. jokes like that. Yes. No, you can't do Can't that. do it. Um, do it. Somebody will do it. I think it'll yeah, be great. Definitely do it. Um, um, and then Devonte replacing Mike Will if we can't get him back. Thirty. You're you're talking about like sixteen million, sixteen to eighteen versus 18, like 30, thirty six. Thirty. Right. He yeah. wants thirty million dollars. So if we don't get yeah. Mike, that's because he went somewhere else, and that's because we weren't willing to pay sixteen million. We're not going to be willing to pay thirty million. I just for don't think we're going to get. Devontae. Well, and that's that's if that's what Mike's price tag is mike might want like 20 25 million or something we don't know what mike is going to be asking for or looking yeah, for so crazy. yeah um it, like would we like to see it sure i'd love to see Devonte, but i mean will the money work out i don't know like I, I feel like that money could be better spent elsewhere if he if yeah. it is indeed going to be we, 30 million two a players year. It, that's it's two just hard man writers we already have the number three paid wide receiver in the league in Keenan Allen. Right. Yeah. You're going to have the number one and the number four guy on your roster and be able to put together an entire team. It's just, right. it's, you can't, like, you, and then you have to pay Justin a gajillion dollars in a couple of years. You yes. just can't do all those things. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, would we like to see it? Sure. Is it That'd be right for the money? Yeah. No. I, I just don't see it happening. Right. I really don't. Um, but thank you, Swim Shady, for asking the question. Let's move it on now to Snoker. Certified Fresh. Who asked the question? ESPN has the Chargers front seven to end the season as starters on the depth chart as Tillery, Joseph, Jones, Bosa, Murray, White, and Wosu. My over-under line for the number of new starters to start the 2022 season is set at 4.5. You taking the over or the under? I like it. Some betting. I like this. Yeah. I'm going the oh. under. I'm going four. I think we're going to have four new, new players on the line. Four new players. Yeah, I think so. So, Nwosu and I White are free Joe agents. Murray's not. Bosa's not. I think Jones is a free agent. Jones and Joseph Murray is. wasn't even a, really a starter no. at the end of the 2021 season. Right. So, I think Jones, <sighs> Joseph, I'd take in the under. John, I think we'll have White. four or less new people. Oh, no, yeah, four. I'm going four. I think something's going to get shook up. That's out. a big overhaul. If you have four new on a seven, on with seven guys, that's, Half the team is new. Well, I mean, I'm going to go under four and a half. Given how the defense performed this last season, I can't be too surprised if that's a big overhaul for for that side of the ball. Or right? you just 
you rotate in Fahoko. Get Fahoko in there. I'm, but there's I'm, just some guys Fahoko that are guy. just under contract that you're not going to be able to get out of there. Right. Like, Tillery's, Tillery's not, going not going anywhere. Bosa's not going anywhere. Um, Murray. Just, actually, yeah. I don't know because jo- Limbaugh Joseph, Justin Jones, Kaiser White, and Uchin and Wosu are all free agents. So right. maybe more. I don't know. There's only, I guess, <laughs> Tillery and Bosa. I mean, we'd like only to keep two. White. So we'd like to, but yeah. we don't know for sure. We don't know for sure. So, so yeah, four and a half is good. I think under four and a half. I'll still go under. Yeah, I'll still go under. I'll say over just to be different and give Kyle a good answer. Um, Thank you. Give him a good one. <laughs> Thanks. All right. Snoker. Thanks. Thank you for asking the question. Let's move on now to CS Films, who asked the question. Where do you guys stand on the idea of bringing in the honey badger to pair with Derwin? Purely speculation on my part from all the flirting happening at the Pro Bowl, but there definitely seems to be mutual interest. That would let Derwin go wherever he wanted on the field. I mean, literally anywhere. I'm not familiar with Tyron Matthews' position. Is is that... The free safety, He's a safety, strong yeah. safety. It's that aspect of the safety that I just don't know is what the difference is com- comparatively. Yeah, he's kind of a roamer. So you put he he can do both, kind of like Derwin. Okay. So you put two guys that are very multiple and Swiss Army knifey. You don't really know who's going where because what we have now, Nas is a free safety, mm-hmm. a true free safety. He's not he's not going to play anything else. Mm-hmm. Um, but I just I don't know. I want. Honestly, I just want Derwin James to get paid. I, that's what, right. first and foremost, he needs to get extended. Right. Yeah, let's get him um, back on. And Tyron Matthew made $14.5 million last year. So, I, I, all these money, there's just, there's such big freaking numbers for some of these guys. They he, are, uh, yeah. He had a three-year, $42 million deal. That was his last deal he signed with Kansas City. Mm-hmm. Um, he's now 30 years old as a safety. I just, maybe if he... It, I don't, I honestly, I just don't know. There's just so many numbers and so much stuff that is so dependent on what goes on somewhere else that I, I don't know. Like it as a Charger fan, like, my heart says, no, it's not yeah, going to happen. I, I, it'd be so much fun if it did. It'd be cool. Defense yeah. would be scary, but I just, of all the places of need, you're talking about, first of all, getting Derwin back, like you said, mm-hmm. then you're looking at Mike Williams. You're looking at all these other guys. Like we're, Edge we're clean. Rush. Yeah, there's so the much D-line. to do. Yeah. It's going to be a domino effect. Like one, the first thing is going to go on free agency. Once we yep. have the first thing, then we can start making really good educated guesses on where things are going to go from there. Well, I right. think the first thing has to be re-signing the guys that you want to keep. Yeah. Like just who do you want to keep and then move on from there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, there you go, CS Films. Thank you for asking the question. Moving on now to I'm allergic to jerks. Yeah. Who asked the question? How much drink? Would a drunk drunk drink if a drunk drunk could drink drink? <laughs> drink is cough syrup and soda, if you don't know. So I guess my question is this. Which player is one you would want to party hard with if you had to? Let's say you're in your drinking prime and had to party hard with one player and their friends. Select one charger of any era than one current player from either of this year's Super Bowl teams. So prime, I'm thinking 26, 27 was my prime. <laughs> so 10 years ago, over 10 years ago. <laughs> so current player, I'm taking Eric Weddle in the Super Bowl because he's a charger. Okay. And so he'll have some good, good charger answer. Good great charger answer. stories. Yeah, great answer. Uh, he'll have some some good ones in there. Um, I think I, I think if we're going to stay on that, I think I'm going to go Joe Burrow because I think that guy parties. You're definitely smoking a cigar for sure. Yeah. So, yeah, hope you don't have emphysema. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you went you went from hating Joe Burrow and wanting him to lose to now to wanting, wanting to party. To party. With Kyle, have you never drank with me? I fuck with everyone that drinks with me. This is the <laughs> perfect setup for me, Kyle. I can get him to get wow. fall asleep with his shoes on. Sky's the limit. Can what would you, you write on it? What would you write on it? Can you imagine a quarterback at the Super Bowl with all these sharpie dicks and mustaches and charging <laughs> bolts size. all over his face? I just put number two on tiger his face. stripes and two. kitty whiskers <laughs> on him and stuff. Yeah. Oh my god! Oh, just a couple meow meows. Yes, just meow meows. Yeah, yes. for sure. So you're looking at like I want to hang out and have a good time with him. No. I want to get, I want to drink and then it's sabotage. Sabotage your motive. Sabotage. Yeah. For Kev. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
yeah, God, I don't even know all the players on these teams. <laughs> you know, so it's just this is like, a real, this is a real specific. poll, but old Charger players that I would want to drink with is Darren Bennett because I think an Aussie rules oh, football yeah. guy would have would Aussie, have a Aussie, good Aussie. time. Oi, oi, oi! Wow, yeah. yeah, that'd be sweet. Aussies are fun. Do we have any former German players? Because Dude, October. Igor Olshansky is pretty. There you pretty go. He's Eastern super European. German. That, there yeah. you go. Yeah. Okay. Let's go. I'll go Igor and Joe Burrow. What a <laughs> weird grouping. That is a bizarre hangout. Yeah. yeah. Um. God, I just, I just don't know. Um. Oh, actually, I could do any era, so I could do Herbert and Burrow together. That's the move. There you go. That's the move. I would probably, okay. I would probably drink with Bosa. On on the current or for the Chargers, play some video games. Play some video games. Watch some anime and just like that sounds like a perfect Friday night. For yeah, I'm all about it. <laughs> um, and I don't know any of the players. I'll say you don't want to hang out with Odell Beckham or Jalen Ramsey. Come on. What <sighs> <sighs> no. about McVeigh Rose? You can have some wine. <laughs> there you go. We'll hang out in a hot tub and play basketball. With yeah, his you dog. can watch his dog. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's have a rosé, huh? <laughs> All right. There you go. I'm allergic to jerks. I hope we answered it well enough for you. Um, you know, McVeigh Rosé would really support the crap out of your video game playing, though. That's oh, he true. Would. He'd be really excited about it. Yeah. Oh, he'd get in there. Yeah. He'd have to have a pullback guy to get, get him out of the way of the <laughs> yeah, screens. Yeah, yeah. He'd be so yeah, into bring it. Bring his pullback coach. We yeah, could, bring him back there. We could go back and watch Hard Knocks and drink every time he says, All right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> Drinking game. There you go. Done. All right. Uh, there we go. <laughs> Let's move <laughs> on now <laughs> to JV, who asked the question. Knowing what you know now about these NFL players, who would you draft in the subsequent years if the Chargers had taken Mahomes in 2017 and the Bucks took Derwin in 2018? Who would you take in 2018 onward? Okay, so if uh, okay, so if Chargers took Mahomes in 2017, I'm looking at the 18 draft, and I would say I would want the Chargers to take. Uh, knowing that the Bucks are going to take Derwin, I would say I'd like them to take Minka Fitzpatrick. Okay, on the 2018 draft, can I pick anybody from the 2018 draft? Just or does pick it have anybody. To be? Yeah, cause, yeah, we can't. Um, <laughs> this spend is all I'm, episode on this. I'm hoping he goes to a different place. He's going to be healthier. Saquon Barkley would be awesome. Sure, that's not a bad sure. pick. Oh, and not? then the following yeah. year, you have to go Nick Bosa. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at it. I'm like Nick. You Bosa. You gotta yeah, go sure. Nick Bosa 2019 w- without a yeah, doubt for sure. Uh, let's see. Joey Nick would be really really fun. Yeah, I'm hoping that like happens. I'm hoping that like it gets to contract time for Nick Bosa, and he's just like, I just want to go hang out with my brother. And then they like <laughs> pool their money together, and then they like split it, like something like that. Like I do that with you, Kyle, because mm. I'd for sure ha- make more, but. Um, I'd split it with you if you'd come play with me. Oh, yes, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay, so 2020. 2020. Justin Jefferson. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Because, I mean, we don't, we wouldn't take Justin because we I'd go Joe Burrow, make him our backup. What? That's so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> this argument would be over. There would be no conversation about who's better quarterback from that draft. <laughs> I didn't, you didn't ask for like legitimate answers. You know, I I'm not that guy. All right, Kev's okay. got a team of quarterbacks. And, and in 2021, uh, I would still take Rashawn Slater. Yeah. yeah. Hands down. Yeah. Okay. Not a bad Good team. answer, guys. Yeah. yeah. So two right. quarterbacks, Nick Bosa, Saquon Barkley. Yeah. Okay. Two oh. quarterbacks are stupid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't agree with that. Yeah. I, I wouldn't. It's not possible. That, given. Cause I'm still just drafting Justin Herbert. So that didn't, God, take it so serious. All right. JV, thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on now to FNUVP. Yeah. Who asked the question? All right. I have been perusing the mock drafts, and I just have to say, I'm not a fan of that Georgia defensive tackle, Jordan Davis. He would just take that Linval Joseph role, and it doesn't help the overall defense. Would he be able to help the pass rush or just be available for the first two downs? What's your guys' way too early draft favorites? 
Well, I think first of all, for that, like you're going to get a cheaper player than Lin than Linval. So it wouldn't money wise, it makes more makes sense, and he's a monster. But I mm-hmm. get what you're saying there. Um, who do you guys got for your favorites at the moment after the seeing the Senior Bowl? Um, yeah, I think everyone that watched the Senior Bowl, the broadcast highlighted this guy pretty hardcore. Uh, was was Trevor Penning, ta- the offensive tackle from Northern Iowa. Mm-hmm. I d- what what I love is the idea of drafting the most expensive positions that you indiv- eventually have to pay, right? That way sure, you can yeah. keep them cheap, and then you just keep and then you just keep drafting those positions like tackle, quarterback, um, tackle, quarterback, like corner or DB. Mm-hmm. Just keep drafting those guys One of first them round over and over and over and over and over and over and over because then you're just keeping them cheap. You're moving on after they're done, and you or if you have a you hit with a pro bowler like Rashawn, you pay him as much as he wants to get paid. Mm-hmm. So I like him. I The way they talked about him, he <laughs> one little nugget that they said is that he watches horror movies the night before the game to get in character. I fucking <laughs> love that so much. I did not hear that. Sign me up. Yeah. Holy said, crap. He watches horror movies to get in character for the game. Dude, he he started into character. They showed all the footage of him running reps um, at the senior bowl. Yeah, he's practices. just a bully. He's just a mean person. Like that's yeah. what you want on the offensive line. Mm, like, yeah. God, like he, he might, you know, might not have some of those attributes you're looking for, but you can't teach mean. Like he's you, six six three thirty. He's a monster. He's a monster. My yeah. goodness. Put him yeah, in let's right. Pray tackle. he falls to seventeen. Okay. Yeah, that was mine too. That was the one. Was that it? I was like, okay. Because I, I want to, I want to go offensive line first round. That's if there's a guy sitting there. I feel like at seventeen, that's kind of where we're landing. Some mm-hmm. of the top edge guys and and you know corners are going to be gone by then. So you're then going to have the guys that aren't the prettiest picks, but are like that guy's going to watch horror mo- movies and murder somebody. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what I want. Well, I, I my finger is far from the pulse of of college and college players. I mean, I I briefly watched some of the Senior Bowl, but I mean the the one that stood out to me, and he's not a, a not a first round pick by any stretch. Um, and it just it also depends on what we do in free agency. Uh, but Trey McBride, uh, the tight end from Colorado State, um, had just some of those moments, especially when he got that touchdown, that it was just like, okay, yeah, this, it, I mean, it made me think of Mark Andrews, you know, of Herbert throwing to Mark Andrews and, uh, you know, getting that tight end. Cause he, all, I mean, the, he seemed to have a little bit of speed. I mean, I, I have none of his stats on here. So if you guys are like, I think he dog, had like the a slowest guy in the world. <laughs> I think he had like over a thousand yards receiving this year. Oh, well, there you go. If so, I'm not, so, that might be way off. Let me look it up. But I think for a tight end, that's pretty. Yeah, this year he had 90 catches for 1,100 yards. It's that's a wide receiver. Insane. That's a wide receiver, uh, yeah. right? So, uh, but I mean, I think he's got the build of a tight end. Um, so that I mean, again, yeah. not a first Six, round four, pick. Two sixty. Yeah, not a first round pick. But if we're still looking for a tight end, um, and we haven't picked one up in free agency, I wouldn't hate seeing Trey McBride in the. Uh, in the day two, pick. Trey, the Trey's Trey McKitty and Trey McBride. Ooh, see, Trey squared. It's, it's all see? coming together. Synergy, baby. Like it's it. all happening. I like it. Branding. Um. All right. FNUVP. Thank you for asking the question. And we go out to basketball fam with Ricky. Yeah. Who asked the question? Yeah. 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 Okay. Oh, that was a good one. Man, I'm hungry. Oh, that reminds me of uh, my question. If you had to compare these QBs to snacks, what snacks would they be and why? <laughs> Herbert Mahomes Lock and Car. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Herbert, oh, that's Holmes, good. If they were snacks, if they were snacks, all right. I I mm. already know Herbert's. What's Herbert's? What is he, it? He's built on. He's he's, <laughs> he's got to go built on. <laughs> he's got to go built on. Bill he's got to support his uh, his brand. I'd go cars like a like a Twinkie. Girl Scout cookie. It's really soft in the inside. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. He's a Girl Scout cookie. He's really popular, but he's just a, just, a soft cookie. Soft. Yeah, he's a soft cookie. <laughs> <laughs> Mahomes is like an expensive dark chocolate that you buy because it's expensive, but then it tastes like shit. Yeah, I don't know. I kind of see him. Jesus. Tastes like shit. That just hit a little bit late. Um, 
I see Mahomes as like a pork rind, like a southern snack that you get at the, at the truck stop <laughs> pork and then you head off to work. Yeah. Because I talk like this, like Kermit the Frog. <laughs> yeah. It was pork rind. Pork rind. Okay. Yeah. And then Drew Locke. He's like, like a, he's like a gummy bear in the shape of a dick. Like one of those like uh, candies you get for like bachelorette <laughs> oh parties. My God. He's like a gummy dick. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. I think he's kind of like a nerd that sound bite. <laughs> <laughs> I would give floor. Jude Locke like a nerd rope. He's just kind of like <laughs> nerd rope. That's a better yeah, answer. Yeah, he just like he thinks he's cool, all colorful, uh, but just gets stuck in your teeth and is annoying. I think he's. I think he's more of like a bad flavored jelly bean. Like he's just kind of oh, in the mix, yeah. and you just like you reach Popcorn in, you're, or... you're expecting something like delicious, yeah. but then it's like, oh, geez, what the f was that? Or like <laughs> that's a good one. That's a good or one. like Laffy Taffy like pulls out one of your fillings. Like it's going in good, but oh yeah, god, oh, we, gotta sure, get, yeah. we gotta get rid of this thing. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Well, yeah. there you go, Ricky. <laughs> wow, I made some weird pulls on that one. There's some um, weird pulls, yeah. I, I like it though. This is it's the off season, folks. So we get these uh crazy questions. And if you have crazy questions, don't Hesitate to put it up on Twitter or our Reddit posts or even at chargerchat.com in the Ask Bolt Fam section. Uh, but that is going to do it for this Ask Bolt Fam and Bolt predictions. Oh, you guys want to Bolt predict who's Super coming Bowl? on Friday? May or may not be a Charger. And his name may or may not rhyme with rhyme Schmarin with Schmarin Schmarin Smoles. <laughs> <laughs> what? Who is that? I have no idea. Oh my God. The ever popular Schmarin Schmoles is coming on. <laughs> wow. May um, or may not, Adam. May or may not. May or may not. Um, yes. So tune in this Friday to see uh, the very special interview we've got. Uh, Bolt Insight Part Do with the ever loving Darren freaking Sproles. What? What? How did it I happen? I love it. I just talked about how he was a part of one of my favorite Charger games of all time. Yep. And he's going to be on the show. And he's going to be on the show talking to freaking Kevin. That's right. That's crazy. Hold on to your butts. Um, okay. <laughs> I'm well, so yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> bolt, bolt predictions for the Super Bowl before we leave. <sighs> uh, Bengals win on a last second field goal. Sure. Sounds about right. Yeah. Yep. And the halftime show is going to be fire. Yes. Halftime Snoop? show will be. Yeah. Come on. Snoop, Dre. Eminem. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be so I can't good. wait for that. Actually. It'll be hot. Um, all right. <laughs> sounds so lame <laughs> talking about that. Right. Chargers aren't in. I want to watch the halftime show in the commercials. Let's that's, go commercials. That's what it's going to be. Yeah. Um, okay. That's going to do it for this episode of Charger Chat, folks. Don't forget to bolt up because we're ready for any squad, any place. Okay. Love you. Bye. Okay. Love you. Bye. Okay. Love you. Bye. And now. A word from our sponsors. Don't know what to make for dinner tonight? Need something quick and delicious? Then look no further than Finger Lickin' Fickin' Chicken. Get the special 15-piece bucket for only $10.99. Fickin' Chicken, it's Finger Lickin' Special.